Hello and welcome back to Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees. Last week was a huge episode where we totally kickstarted our power generation. We investigated the mod power with an H and I basically gave you guys a full guide to that entire mod. But this week we're going for a bit of a change of pace and we're just going to hit up the farm and take care of a few of the little odd jobs that are lying around. So what do I mean by odd jobs? Well, all kinds of things are kind of a little bit broke at the mo. For example, uh, well, we've got a battery here plugged into a centrifuge and it doesn't need a battery. So bam, we can get rid of that. Also, we've got a few problems with the centrifuge. Now, as you can see, it's backed up. We've got loads of honeycombs in here because we've got no place to store the fluids. As we hover over the centrifuge controller, you can see here the tank is full to the brim with honey. There's creepers around. Oh no, <laughs> oh no! Oh, so all of these tunnels that I've been digging underground to hook everything up, these things have been slowly filling up with monsters like creepers. So I'm gonna have to be very careful because one wrong move today and everything's gonna blow up. We've moved all of the wind generators from the front of the lab because, well, the only reason they were here is because it was easy. And the problem we had is that the whole place was just looking real messy. So let's just tidy everything up. It looked kind of ugly, but I think it happens to everybody playing modded Minecraft. You start building things just outdoors on the grass, just because it's quicker and easier. And then before you know it, you could have had an entire cool base set up, but instead everything just looks like a giant mess out the front of your house. And it really sucks. So let's start tidying this up and uh, getting things back to how they should be. There's two ways we can do things. Way number one, is to build some large multi-block tanks if we can find them and put them somewhere in the lab and fill them up with honey. And it might look kind of cool, but it would be really impractical because putting honey in tanks like that makes it really difficult to get the honey out of the tanks if we actually need it. So route number two, which doesn't look quite as cool, but is definitely way more practical. Just put some honey in the fridge there. Oh yeah, oh now that is a, that is a good looking fridge, is it not? Full to the brim with milk and honey. Oh yeah. So option number two on the table is to add fluid storage to our refined storage system. And you're like thinking, what? what? What the hell? We can put fluid in our computer. That sounds like a great way to break your computer. Well, don't worry. It's not like these computers are like real life computers. Ha ha ha. There's no chip shortage here because old Emerald Muncher wants to mine Bitcoin. No, no, in fact, we can actually make a fluid storage for our computer, and it should actually be very easy. So we have a disk drive here for normal storage. What we can also do, and we're on refined storage here, is we can put fluid storage in here as well. You can make a fluid grid that shows you all the fluids and lets you interact with them. And also you can make storage disks that are set up to accept fluid instead. And they, they start pretty high, like 64 is the lowest. So first up, let's make a fluid storage disk. But to do that, we're gonna need some glass because like I said, I made loads of bottles, put them in the uh, computer to get used by the, uh, put them in the computer to get used, hmm, hang on a sec. I put them in the computer to get used by the centrifuge and we ran out of them completely. So we've got to go down below now and get us some more sand. Ulti mine to the max, boom. Don't mind if I do. Oh, wait, you can fart underwater? Well, I, I know you can in real life, but it just doesn't doesn't make a sound, does it? I mean, it, it makes a sound, but I mean, I've never tried it and I never would. That's disgusting, but it definitely makes a weird sound, maybe. So a quick trial run. We're gonna make three of these storage parts. Wait, what, what are we missing now? Quartz enriched iron, okay. We've got the iron, we've got the quartz, let's enrich that sucker. And here we go, to start with we've got a 256 fluid thing. We'll put a storage disc inside it as well. Does this work? We've we got one of those? Yeah, we've got a spare one of these, boom. So now we have a fluid storage disc. Now can I put this inside the disc drive? Yes I can, okay. 
so we have fluid storage potentially within our computer now. So that's step one. We have a fluid storage disk, but it is empty. Now let's make a fluid grid. So we make a normal grid first. And now what makes a grid a fluid grid is an advanced processor and a bucket. Simple as that. Boom, a fluid grid. So we're going to put this fluid grid right above our main normal grid like this. Aha, now also actually, to make our fluid grid a different color, we can use dye. And I think this is going to be useful because if we have a color scheme going around our farm, it will be less confusing when we click on the crafting grid and it turns out, oh no, this is the fluid grid. So the question now is, what color do we want to make our fluid grids versus our item grids? Well, blue and orange are a great combo. So if blue is items, I feel like orange could be liquid. And bam, we have an orange fluid grid. It almost looks yellow as well, so that's kind of cool. Now we'll put this down. Oh yeah, that's much easier to see. So we have a fluid grid that looks empty, and we have a fluid storage disk inside the computer. So we know our computer has the capacity to store fluids now. So the question now is, how do we get all of this honey from over here in the centrifuge to inside of our computer system? Because at the moment, it's very clogged up. Oh, and if you hold down shift, you can see exact numbers. It's got a little bit of rainbow honey and a lot of normal honey in the tank. So it's time to dig down and look at the inner workings. Now be careful because there could be rude dudes down here. Oh yeah, here he is. What's up, chief? Rest in peace. So a quick look at our centrifuge shows us that we have an exporter that takes stuff from the computer and puts it in here, an importer that pulls stuff from the centrifuge, and of course power hooked up all the way around the back to our power reactor. So how do we get the importer to suck fluids out? Well, you can change its type to fluids. However, that stops it from taking the items out as well. So what we need is another importer that we can... Oh, look, already, look. I've set this to fluids for just a short amount of time. And you can see, hold shift, all of the honey now has been sucked out. Unfortunately, yeah, like I said, that means the items don't get sucked out. So we just need to add, basically, another importer set to items or fluids, whichever one we don't have. And right, so again, we're going to plug this in to the centrifuge. Set this bad boy to items because the other one is set to fluids. And we should start to see, ah yeah, there we go. Everything is now being sucked out. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Oh yeah, man, this thing is so quick. Can you imagine how quick this will be when we get like just a couple of centrifuges here? It's going to be nuts. It's going to be crazy. But yeah, it's all automated now and all of our honeycomb should get put through this mixer. What we could even do is add another exporter that adds even more honeycombs to this list. But for now, we're going to keep it as this amount. Once we get more centrifuges, we'll do a more even split. And look at this, so much netherite scrap from this stuff. Oh, it's, it's such a valuable source of netherite, these bees. Okay, so let's just say goodbye to this market as well. Ooh. Oh, Emma. <laughs> oh, no. Well, never mind. She was uh, <laughs> not that important to us. Man, she just exploded. That's crazy. So we're going to move the market to somewhere that makes more sense. We'll probably put it down by the colony. Although, um, it's a bit unfortunate because Emma has a massive honker and just all, all around looks really freaking weird compared to the normal colonists, who we haven't actually seen for a while. So I hope they're all alive and stuff. Oh my god, I really hope they're still alive. I mean, they might not be. Oh god. Well, <laughs> that's a problem for later. So the mining dimension. Where are we going to put the portal to the mining dimension? Well, I, I feel like, you know, we, we probably want, in the end, like a portal room. We're going to have to go to different places all the time. And uh, having teleporters or a teleporter room dedicated to where we want to go is probably a really cool idea. But you know what? I haven't been in my basement for ages. So for now, we're just going to put the teleporter to the other world, or wherever we're going, here. There we go. Now the reason why we put that down is because we need to set up another quarry. We've got a lot of ATM ore, I'm not quite sure how much. 
Okay, yes, yeah, so we've got 12 ATM ore and two ingots, but we're gonna need a few more because we're gonna be using the ATM ore to make ourselves a full set of armor. Now, ATM ore is pretty easy to find, so we're gonna put these 12 ores quickly through our mechanism setup. I know we only get three ingots out of the one ore for this setup, it could be better, but ATM ore isn't that valuable at the moment. So what I want to do is set up the quarry again in the mining dimension and of course some logistical transporters to move items around. We've got our configurator, but also we're going to try something else as well. It's all well and good having stuff in another dimension, like a quarry in another dimension that we can't get the items from. How about we find a way to get the items from the mining dimension all the way back here into our computer without having to go there, make it all automatic. Well, we can do that. We're going to make a nether chest. Is it a nether chest? Uh, what is it called? Nether chest, a chest of some kind. It's uh, an ender chest, that's the one. There we go, boom. We're gonna make an ender chest. So let's -a go. Now this is quite exciting. Much in the same way if you move a nether portal, you appear somewhere else in the nether. I wonder if you appear somewhere else in the mining dimension when you move the teleport pad. I could actually end up hovering over the quarry that we built earlier. That would be pretty scary. Or, oh, okay, so you do move somewhere, but not very far away. Is there anything here valuable? Yeah, I mean, we have loads of valuable stuff here. Anyway, let's go somewhere further over here and set up a brand new quarry. This time we're gonna go all the way down so we do actually get the diamonds. But what we really want is just to expose the all the modium ore. What's this stuff? Arid garden. Oh, cool. Stuff I haven't eaten. Can I eat this stuff? Cassava? D Whoa, unique flavor. New hearts, amazing. So let's set this up. We put down the builder. We put the card in. Old Windy Gens. I'm not sure how close or far away these have to be from each other, but it seems like being one block away. Whoops, seems to work. That's fine. And there we go, plugged in with power. Right, now let's plug in our ender chest. And this is how we're gonna get items back. You, know, you guys know how an, an ender chest works, right? You put one here and then uh, one in our world. It's a vanilla ender chest, not like one of the modded ones. So we plug this in with these transporter tubes. Wait, is that, is that not worked? Why is it not letting me put it in here? Basic logistical sends items. Okay, so after a lot of experimenting, I've realized that you cannot actually pipe into or out of a vanilla ender chest. Instead, we have to use a modded ender chest. And I'm gonna try with the ender chest from ender chests mod. It feels like it might work. But before we do that, I've discovered another way, a much easier way of designating a custom size for your quarry. Basically with the build card in your hand, hold shift, right click, and you can select a corner for the quarry. And we're gonna go over here, why not? Boom. And then we can go over this way and drag a kind of like a big squarish kind of shape for our quarry. Here, boom. New settings copied to the shape card. There we go, that's installed. And now all we need to do is change the Y. So at the moment it's one flat and it's minus one down. So we're gonna instead change that to about 100 and put that minus 49 blocks down. And a quick test should reveal to us the shape of this quarry. Oh yeah, like a giant swimming pool. In fact, wasn't that the plan with Sipsco to kind of turn the quarry into a swimming pool? I don't know. But anyway, now we can press go and begin to start digging out this quarry. Right now, it looks like it's going to begin over there and then uh, continue the pattern all the way around. Now, it's going to put items into this chest first. And it needs a little bit more power because we haven't got that many windmills here. But we'll leave it to brew for the moment because we're going to go home and see if we can set up some ender chests. Okay, wow. This is a very simple mod that has three recipes. Ender bag, ender pouch, and the end of the chest. And we'll put one this side, 
which we can pipe into the computer. And we'll put it in this bit here because, uh, well, yeah, it's nice and uh, nice and easy to access. Okay, so we couldn't pipe to the vanilla ender chest, but in theory, this one should work. So we put it down here. We'll put some logistical transporters from this chest into the ender chest. Now we'll tell the configurator to pull like this. And we are putting it into this chest. This is apparently public use, but we don't need to worry too much because there's nobody else here. I don't think at least. Maybe somebody could hijack our ender chest but I don't think so for the moment. Let's go back to the overworld and see if we can pipe out of the ender chest that end of things. But before we go, let's turn on chunk loading for this chunk where the builder is. So let's take a look. The ender chest. Oh, and it works, look, here we go. And it's still being filled up, which means the forced chunk loading is in effect and does work. That's amazing. Well, okay, now we just need an importer to import into the computer. Oh yeah, that's the business. Now we're getting stuff directly from our quarry in the mining dimension going straight into our computer. Amazing. Now let's just seal this up so it looks all neat and stuff. So what other things do we have left to do on the farm? We've taken care of the fluids. All of the fluids now are coming out of the centrifuge. That's amazing. We went to the mining dimension, set up another quarry, and we've got an ender chest in position to send items directly back to our computer. Now there was one other little thing to do. We haven't been to the colony for a long time. However, our colony did need acacia. One of the recipes that one of our builders needed to finish their job, in fact, if we check Ugo Koknosha's secret scroll, it says they're building Builder 3, and uh, what they need for that is some acacia log. At least I think it's acacia log. It should be acacia log. Why is the scroll empty? What's... Is she dead? Cersei Drogo's alive. Hey, how's it, how's, how's it hanging? She's good in the hood. What is this pesky little scamp doing now? She's here, and what do you Not need? Bada boom bada bing. Like I said, she needs acacia logs. One acacia log, and I think this is the final thing that she needs to complete her build. So I tell you what, we're going to go over to the Lumberjack, the Foresters, and give Cersei these Acacia Samplings. So if we plant these around, we'll also get some Bone Meal. And I imagine she probably needs some more axes, so we'll get her some axes and some hoes. Okay, let's grow some Acacia. Delicious, delicious Acacia. Oh no, she doesn't need axes, she's going for it. She's, uh, she's busy, she's keeping busy. But, but a boom, but a bing. While we wait for Cersei to get about herself, we're going to dig one of these trees ourselves. Hello, hello, my lovely Ugo. Here we go. One stripped acacia log. Oh, stripped acacia. That means, uh, that means like a, a dagger, doesn't it? You need to strip the acacia with like a knife, isn't it? Oh, look. While they mostly just chop trees, they will also strip and modify logs if required. Well, I had no idea. Otherwise, I'm fairly sure you can use a knife to strip the logs. But does that mean we have to teach uh, our, um, our forester the recipe? What up, Cersei? Can I teach you a recipe or two? Here we go. Custom recipes. Aha. Uh -huh. So she does know how to turn some of these logs into strip logs. For example, acacia into stripped acacia. Okay, cool. So if we put some here, she might do that, maybe. Okay, so if we monitor the clipboard, we should see what's going on. So at the moment, the cook just wants some food and that's an open request. Show only important requests. One of you guys said as well, I can't put things manually into the warehouse. I have to use a Dropbox, otherwise, the courier just doesn't know that they're there. In future, we'll use a Dropbox to put things in. But you guys have also been saying that we need more than one builder, definitely. And we also need more than one courier, definitely. So those are definitely things we need to do. Let's take a look at Town Hall and see who's, uh, who's, who's, who wants to join the, uh, the crew. We've got Hermione Taserface. <laughs> Taserface. Oh, look. 
ago, Cognasha has started work on Builder 3. I guess it worked. Fan Habby Tastic. We've got a <laughs> taser face. We've got Padme Kenobi. And also we got Ned Smolpine. And they want books and stuff. Well, odd jobs are odd jobs. What's most important is that we come back to the colony next time and uh, do everything right. At the moment, we're just here again, like I said, ticking some boxes and uh, helping things move along. Now that Ugo is making this builder hut a level three builder's hut, and I think she has everything she needs. Now that she's doing that, it means we can upgrade our other buildings to level three. And that's huge. That's gonna open up so much potential for us in terms of upgrading our colony. Of course, the other odd job to do at the colony, and that is go and check on the research, always. We should be refreshing this research as soon as it comes up, but we really haven't been doing that. We've been a bit lazy with it. So, what's going on, Galadriel? Let's see what's going on. Okay, and now the final thing to do on our to-do list this episode is make ourselves some all the modium armor. You guys said it should be done. It, this stuff is way better than just any of the silent gear stuff. It's just insane. And you know what? I looked at the stats and you guys are freaking correct. So we're gonna make some all the modium gear. We're gonna start off with some boots, obviously. All the modium boots and the piglins become neutral with these, so that's good. Boom, all the modium boots. We'll make some legs. These are expensive. Make a chest piece, ooh. Actually, you know what? I think we can afford the full set. Oh yeah, a full set of all the modium armor. And why stop there? Let's make an all the modium sword and pickaxe. Wait, how do I make an all the modium sword? Wait, I don't, I don't think I can. There is no recipe for an all the modium sword. We can make an all the modium alloy blade, but we need vibranium and unobtainium for that. Same with a shovel. Ah, oh, all the tools and weapons are locked behind. Oh, check this out though. Sixteen thousand. Whoa, 16,384,000 ,000 storage part. That's freaking nuts. Oof, well, okay, I guess there is no all the modium sword to make. Let's put this armor on, except the jetpack. Oh man, I shouldn't have made the chest piece because I, I, I've got the jetpack, which I kind of need. Well, hot diggity damn. So the other things we should make with all the modium are a charm of all the modium sight, that's like the game telling you this is how you're supposed to get all the modium. All the modium honeycomb, definitely we want that. If we can get an all the modium bee, that'd be nuts. All the modium solar panel, that must be a crazy way to get power. All the modium furnace, and an all the modium jetpack, and I think this is from iron jetpacks. And I remember you guys saying that iron jetpacks are way better than mechanism jetpacks so that I can keep my chest armor. Well, that's food for thought. Well guys, thank you for watching Minecraft All The Mods Feed The Bees. This week we took care of some odd jobs, like we got fluid storage, we built some All The Modium armor, and we went to the mining dimension and set up a ender chest so that we can teleport items back to home. Also, we went to the colony and hooked them up with Acacia so that Ugo can get started on the Builder Hut level 3. I'm not sure where we're going to go next episode, but stay tuned because it's going to be a fun one. As always, a big huge thank you to everybody that subscribed and become a member of the channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and until next time, take care.